Welcome to XR template lesson number 14. In this XR Web Designer 7 Premium tutorial, we'll be going over the transparency tool. We'll be going over how to use a flat field transparency versus a linear field transparency. If you haven't already, start a blank new document in XR Web Designer 7 Premium. Once you do that, go ahead and go to your page and layer gallery to the right of your screen. And if that menu doesn't come out, sometimes it doesn't when you place your cursor over it. So just left click on it. And when that comes out, go to your upper right hand corner to the thumbtack looking icon and lock your panel for the page and layer gallery. Once you do that, go ahead and select the mouse off layer. And then in your options at the top, go ahead and hit new layer. And we're going to make a layer called, maybe let's call it layer, let's call it layer two. Once you create that, go ahead and drag that layer between the mouse off and mouse over layer. And if, if I'm going too fast for you, or you seem a little confused about what's going on in this tutorial, uh, it's really important to make sure you watch the previous tutorials because some of this stuff in turn that I'm doing right now is stuff that I've covered in previous tutorials. So at any point that you seem confused, definitely take a look at some of the previous tutorials to help you to understand. So now that we have layer two created in, in between the mouse off and mouse over layer, let's go ahead and select the mouse off layer. And then let's go to your toolbar. And in your toolbar, let's go ahead and make a quick shape. In this case, I'm gonna make a rectangle and I'm gonna make it a black rectangle. So once you do that, let's go ahead and go back to the page and layer gallery and select layer two. We're gonna go back to our quick shapes and we're gonna make a star. Now my star may look a little different from yours because I changed the settings, but don't worry, as long as you have a star, you should be okay. Or a shape that's near the same as a star. So go ahead and draw your star. And once you draw your star, go ahead and go to your color editor. And I'm gonna make mine's probably a maybe a light blue. And once you make your, your star, let's go ahead and select the selection tool. And we're gonna place this star that we just drew right above the black square. And the reason that this star is sitting on top of this black square is because of the order of the layers in your page and layer gallery. And you can see that by going to your page and layer gallery. If you place your cursor over the, the stack of paper icon, that's what I call it, it may not be the official name. But if you go over the icon that looks like a stack of paper, you'll see that there's a black square and you'll see that the mouse off layer is under layer two. If you go to layer two, it shows the the blue star that we drew. And since that layer is above the mouse off layer, when you look in your workspace, the blue star will be above the black square. So that's why it's in that particular order. So let's go ahead and select, make sure you have the blue star selected. And if you do, go ahead and go to your toolbar and select the transparency tool, which looks like this kind of looks like a cup to me but I, I don't know what it looks like officially but it looks like kind of like a cup sitting on a table but it's actually a transparency uh, tool and it kind of looks like a glass too so look for the glass looking icon it's the it's the transparency tool and once you select that go ahead and go to your info bar and left click on that first drop down menu and this is by the way your your transparency shape and when you left click on that look for the linear transparency and select that and now you'll see that the blue star kind of fades into the black rectangle and if you drag the ending node where the rectangle's at towards the center of the, of the star you'll see that now it looks kind of like the star is fading into the black background and if you select the selection tool go to your toolbar and select that you'll and then left click in any empty space in your workspace and you'll see that it kind of looks like the blue star is fading into the black. And the reason I, I had you selecting the empty space in your workspace is just to get rid of all the nodes around it so that you can just see what it looks like without having it selected. If we had it selected, you have these blue square nodes around it and I don't like I don't like those things around it when I want to look at something, especially a Pacific drawing. But you'll see that it, it fades in there. <laughs> no matter where you drag it, it looks like it's fading into the the black black rectangle. Let's go back to the transparency tool. And 
make sure you select the end node and that if you have that selected go to your info bar at the top here and you see there's a transparency slider and if you drag that towards less transparency or a lower percentage you'll see that the right hand side of this object becomes less transparent or no transparency at all now if you go ahead and select the beginning node of this tran this linear transparency and you go to your info bar you have a different percentage because you can control the percentage on both sides of your object using a linear transparency so the beginning transparency if we increase it now the left hand side becomes more transparent and now it appears as if the left side of the star fades into the background of the black square and let's go ahead and reduce that level of transparency on the right hand side and let's go ahead and click the end node on this transparency where the arrows at and let's increase the transparency and again you can see that you can place the transparency on any side alternatively you could select the end arrow for the transparency and drag it in a, ro a circular motion and you can have that transparency fade in any direction that you want and control the distance of the transparency so maybe I wanted to kind of face up north I could do that or if I wanted to face on the angle to the left or right you can have it kind of fade on the angle to the right or left and now it kind of fades upward with the transparency so that's how you adjust the, the linear transparency if you wanted to also go back go ahead and select the transparency tool while you have the, the star selected and select the beginning transparency if you pull that back you'll have less of the beginning transparency and you'll have more of the end transparency meaning that whatever transparency level you set for the end it's going to be more predominant but if you push the beginning part of the transparency upward and place and press the end transparency by selecting and pulling upward and dragging it you'll have more predominantly the beginning transparency so you can kind of adjust it a little bit different depending on the placement of that that the beginning and starting node so now you know how to deal with with linear transparencies the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is a a flat field transparency so go ahead and select make sure you have that blue star still selected and then go to your transparency tool and change go to your info bar and click the drop down menu and choose flat transparency and select your selection tool and you'll see that in this current state it looks like there's no transparency but if you left click and drag the star over like the edge of this black rectangle you'll see that it does have a transparency and the reason that we can't see it when it's placed over the star I mean over the black rectangle is because it's a, it's a flat field transparency meaning the whole object is transparent to a certain percentage so you can only see it on the edge because it's an equal level of transparency and if you go to the transparency tool again in your toolbar select it you'll see that you have a slider in your info bar and you can adjust the transparency by increasing the percentage or decreasing it and it'll allow you to see more or less of an object behind it or none of it at all depending on how you set the transparency so now you know how to use both the flat field transparency and the linear transparency if you have any questions about you know how to use those two parts of the transparency tool feel free to send me a message on YouTube and if this video was helpful, definitely give a thumbs up. And if it wasn't helpful, send us a message so that we can help you to better understand, understand how to use the transparency tool. Thanks again for viewing this tutorial and look forward to seeing many more tutorials to help you with learning how to use Xara Web Designer 7 Premium. Yeah.